Aisha. So welcome everybody to both sides of the conversation. I'm Rico Hamilton and my guy. John Henry, co-founder of both sides of the conversation. We have an amazing segment for you tonight. We have some amazing people that we're gonna be highlighting today that's doing amazing stuff in our communities. Um, so we're gonna be highlighting them. Uh, we're gonna be having them talk about all the amazing things that they got going on. So for all of you out there that's watching, thank you for following us. Thank you for um, being a part of the both sides of the conversation family. Uh, John, did you have anything before I go into the right? I'm gonna go right into it. So if you got some, let, let it be said right now. I just want everybody to see these amazing people and uh, get to see the amazing work that they're doing. So uh, let's jump right into it, Rico. All right, so our first person um, just 10 years ago this person was being released from a 10 year prison sentence. He left there with a plan in mind never to return and became and to become a mentor to the youth of his community, wanting to teach them more than becoming productive members of their community, but also caregivers of their community. Since then, this person has become a beloved pillar in his community, often called Unc or Uncle Damien. He continues to accomplish his goals set many years ago, but has done so much more. Damien began the nonprofit Us For Us Bay Area a few years ago, and the impact has been tremendous on the community at large, but especially for the youth of the organization. So without further ado, I want to introduce this dude, Uncle Damien. I call him Posey Wozy because he's doing some amazing stuff. Like, I know he only mentioned us for us, but like he, I mean, he's been doing like a lot of stuff. I mean, like he like it, like he hasn't even put, he didn't even put a, a half of the stuff that he got going on. So without further ado, I want to uh, introduce Uncle Damien. Let me just say uh, something, Rico. All right, go ahead. I go got ahead. I got to say something about my brother, man, because listen, this brother is dedicated, <laughs> dedicated, dedicated, um, never stopped working, you know, 
uh, when Rico say he got his boots on the ground doing the work in the community, man, from juvenile hall to the youngsters in the street, feeding the homeless, us for us, city eats, uh, just doing amazing things in our community. He never cried, he never complained. He just grinds, he just keeps grinding. He show up to every event. He support all cultures, all communities. This brother went to Chicago to help clean up and stop the violence in Chicago. I mean, everywhere, man. The people champ is, is an understatement, man. He's a motivational speaker. Um, definitely, I know when um, we highlight people on the Hidden Gym Show, people that do this work, and I know we don't like to be highlighted because we don't do it for recognition, but me and Rico believe that, you know, we have to get a flowers to the people while they live and we got to give them the respect. You know, it's 20 of our uh, great leaders in the community who passed away and we got to talk about all the great work they do. So without further ado, man, we'll give your flowers today, man, as one of the gems, Uncle Damien, the guy, the man, the legend. Let's go. <laughs> Well, I guess it's my turn to speak. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, you guys having me on here today. Like you said, uh, you know, <clears throat> people who do this work, we really don't do it for accolades personally. But um, you know, I admire what y'all doing with the with the Hidden Gym Show uh, because I am of the belief that you should uh, champion the people that are making change and doing better in the community. Um, you know, this remind me of something I was doing a few years back, the thank you, thank you Thursdays I was doing, if y'all remember that, both Giant Henry and Rico were one of the thank yous that I did years ago and Charlie, you know, uh, for individuals who were doing this work. But, uh, you know, I'm only as good as the people around me. So I'm grateful to have amazing individuals around me. I'm grateful to my us for us team, <laughs> somebody that gave us that uh, for all the amazing work we do. Real people in the community, you know, you see my guy Charlie got his, <laughs> got our thing on, you know, we banging it, we keeping it. We di we, 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 we different, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, we just, uh, uh, I like to look at it as, as a, a add on to all of the amazing things that are already going on in our city, you know, uh, in addition to the great work that John Henry's doing, uh, that Rico's doing, that Pedro's doing, Sabrina Simone, you know, um, you know, all of the amazing organizations in our city, United Players, Project Level, May 4 with the Rebels, uh, you know, stuff that Ron New's doing, everything ever at YCD. Uh, you know, our city's pretty dope, man. Our city's pretty different than a, a lot of cities, man, with the stuff that we got going on. Uh, even still with all of that, we still got a lot of issues. So, you know, it's very important that we continue the fight. That's why I don't really, you know, you know, that's why I don't stop because it doesn't stop. So it's like, you know, how can I stop if it doesn't stop? You know, my, um, you know, my outlook and my energy is, is different. Like right now I'm reserved, I'm chilling. You know, most people know me being out there pumped up, especially around the youth. But, you know, I utilize my downtime to reserve that energy and save it for when I need it because you never know when you might get that call and I got to be out of here. I got to, you know, I got to bust a move. My, I still live in the hood. I live on this point, you know, and I'm all over everywhere every day to the best of my ability. So, you know, I'm just grateful to be, you know, um, in the same uh, vein as all of these amazing individuals that you guys have had on the show and that you will have, you know, I'm just doing my part, man. I'm just blessed to be a part of it, man. And, you know, whatever accolades that, you know, I get, it's not about me. It's about we, I got an amazing team. Shout out to everybody at us for us. Shout out everybody at the city. Eat. Shout out everybody at YCD. Shout out to APRI. You know, like I said, I'm a CBO ho. I don't, I don't care what they say. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm rock with them all. I got a us for us hoodie on right now. Cause you know, because we knew and, you know, we don't get a whole lot of support. So maybe I can shine some light on us for us, man. But, I, you know, you might see me in a, a, a both sides of the conversation shirt tomorrow. And the day after that, a City Eats shirt. or And then the day after that, whatever, you know, me, Sabrina's got going, whatever. I might, I got an SVIP hoodie in there too. And I ain't never wear SVIP, but I got a hoodie. They gave me a hoodie 
you know, rest in peace, jungle, you know, Big John, uh, Big James gave me that when we was, we was all outside the hospital, you know, praying for my brother, you know, so I keep that kind of stuff on my mind. I keep these, keep these buttons on my hoodie, man, that keep me humble and to remind people it's not about me, it's about the people. So, you know, my name on the screen, you know, I'm here, but it's really the people. I represent the people, man, in the streets and the community, born and raised in the city, been through the ups and downs, you know. So, you know, I'm just blessed to be here, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to all the fallen soldiers, man. Rest in peace to all of the uh, people, uh, you know, lives taken in justly, you know what I mean? Justice for Jace, Sean Monterosa, George Floyd, you know what I mean? Alex Nieto, all these amazing individuals, you know, who are not here with us, man. So I do it, I do it for them, you know. That's why, you know, they spirit running through me. So when you see me, you see all of them, you see all, my native brothers, all the ancestors, all the all the lonely tribes, man, you know what I mean, is running through my veins. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love my nephew Charlie, man. He represents for me on that side. You know what I mean? You might not see me, but you see versions of me all over the city, believe it or not, you know. So it's a blessing, man. And I appreciate you guys for having me. I just want to thank you again, man, for 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 all the work that you do. Um, I know. Uh, I'm I'm in a lot of places at a lot of you know in a lot of conversations and you're like like y you might not know this but like a lot of people appreciate the work that you do, bro. Like a lot of people, like your name comes up a lot when it when the work is being talked about. So you know, definitely know that us for us is in everybody's mouth. So you know, and and I wish you prosperity and blessings in your journey. Um, in whatever endeavor you 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 take upon, because you're deserving of it, you're sincere. Uh, you didn't get a chance to talk about your work with Juvenile Hall. Um, it's committed. a lot of stuff I'll be doing. What, what I, days? What days like, were that? We were. Well, we were. Oh, at Juvenile Hall. Monday, yeah. Monday and Wednesday. You know. Every what? Monday and Wednesday, consistently for years, uh, with Jack and John Hill. Hill. So it's like I'm it's like you know, and Charlie too. I brought Charlie up there and Charlie became consistent. Then he went to and Pedro. Pedro to too. Comedy. Yeah, Pedro too. But I, I didn't bring Pedro, but Pedro be up there too. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, Charlie, I brought Charlie up there and Charlie was consistent. And Charlie went to college, did his college thing, got smarter than all of us, then came back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and did it and, and kept do and kept doing it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I I mean, I could talk about stuff like, you know, I'm helping kids, I, helping young people get jobs. I, mean, I can't say kids because it's 13 to, 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 to 60 is rocking with me right now. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to help the kids in juvenile hall when they get out, kids in the community who just looking so, for support. I'm working with people getting out of prison, looking for support. Uh, a young lady just left my office who she just did six years. I'm helping her. You know what I mean? Get stuff together, man. It's just all—it's just about just being there for the people, man, and you know, falling in line with the with the greats, man. You know what I'm saying? Doing the work that people been doing. You know, uh, on Thursday, uh, United Players celebrating their 26 year anniversary. You know what I mean? You know, so I've just you know, I don't got you know my daughter finna be 21. I'm not married, not engaged or nothing. So my whole dedication is just. The community, I ain't got no other kids, you know what I'm saying, except for I got 10,000 nieces and nephews throughout the city, throughout the world, man. I, you know, I went to Vegas as well to help, you know, uh, with some gang stuff. I got a lot of nieces and nephews down there that I've been communicating with, helping, staying focused, you know. So it's just, uh, it's a lot of work to be done, man, because it's like, you know, the devil not letting up, so we can't let up neither, you know. That's real. I mean, I just want to say thank you as well, man. I mean, you know, you got big shoes. People can't fill those shoes. And the chef for your uh, schedule for both sides of the conversation is a privilege. We honored to just be in the presence with you. And um, you always reach out and keep us involved with what's going on. And we just appreciate you. And that's part of this hit gym sh uh, show, man, to just get more people to know who you are. There's already a large following, but to get more people, get sponsors, get people who want to do something. Because me and Rico here all the time, people saying we don't know how to help. We don't know how to get involved. How do I, I want to volunteer? Here you go right here. Good brother running stuff in the city. We can always use an extra hand, an extra ideal, some extra support. 
And that's why we got these hidden gems on here so people can get behind them and support them. So but thank you again, Uncle Damien. But you know, I'm yeah. different though, man. The people that be saying that, man, they not looking hard enough. They not being right. real because, you know, <laughs> we ain't that hard to find. You know what I'm saying? Right. I can easily, right. that's what I did. When I came home from prison, I did 10 years. So my, mind you, you know, uh, nobody's really trying to hire an, an ex-convict, ex-gangster, pimp, drug dealer, gun shooting motherfucker, especially at their nonprofit. So it was like, you know, I, I started volunteering and it wasn't that hard. You know, I went, you know, I seen where the need was at and I just started volunteering, man. And, you know, luckily, uh, uh, Ch Valentina and Joe over there at the Procedure Center, shout out to, to Joseph Silva and Valentina Sedano, who've been doing this work for hella long. They took a chance on me after a month of volunteering. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, and then I just set it off and I, I haven't looked back since, but, you know, before I left prison, I had a plan. Like uh, Rico said, man, you know, I was blessed to get awards while I was I was in prison. So, you know, it's just an honor to be serving the people along with y'all. Man, right on. We thank you very much, man. And uh, you guys follow Uncle Damien, uh, Us For Us, all the social media handles. Check them out. Uncle thank Damien you again, Speaks. Uncle. Check out my YouTube, Uncle Damien Speaks. It's a little bit more refined. <laughs> All right, Rico, you want to get to this sister, our next hidden gem? Oh, for sure, for sure. So we got another hidden gem. Hey, we got a we got a pretty, pretty hard, hard lineup, man. Of uh, some uh, some some folks that's like hard hitters in our city, man, that's really out there doing and putting in the work, bro. So I don't know if if hey, we're gonna have a segment like this one again, uh, my brother. So woo, let me get on to this next person, man. So uh this person was born and raised in San Francisco, Bayview Hunters Point neighborhood. She's a mother of four, grandmother, and a longtime community activist and volunteer everywhere she has lived, including Las Vegas, Nevada, San Diego, California, and Oakland, California. She's a member of the Bayview Hunters Point Mothers and Fathers Committee, sits on the Student Site Council, as well as the African American Parent Advisory Council at Paul Revere Elementary member of the California Environmental Justice Coalition, vice chair of the Southeast Community Council, community organizer, policy advocate for green action for health and environmental justice, and co-founder of The Real Targeted, <laughs> Ms. Sabrina Man, <laughs> you know, we have to, we have to get you on, Sabrina, man. You know, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. And you're a powerful sister. You got a lot of information. You got man. a lot of energy. Um, and you know what comes with knowledge and power, you become a threat. So people get afraid. But we also yeah. know that. We also know that you about your people in the community. So we just go, go ahead and turn it over to you, sister. Keep doing the work you're doing. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate that you guys invited me on here being with such fabulous guests. And I just got a message to all the hidden gems out there. You know, you steal a diamond, even if you a diamond in a rough and don't forget to count your blessings in the middle of your hell, you know? So uh, let's just get right down to this. So um, like Rico said, I was born and raised out here. Um, I didn't start with activism at first. You know, sometimes we got to get knocked down to wake up, you know, and as um, Uncle Dane said, you know, I didn't have to do time, but I am a federal felon. So, and I have been homeless before. So that really woke my game up. And um, I used to ignore a lot of people. I, I knew the problems. I've seen the problems in Bayview. I was aware of the problems all over, but you know, I was living my life. It took for me to be knocked down to really wake up, to get myself in this movement. So when I decided to get in, I did start volunteering. I started volunteering at animal shelters. You know, I love animals. But then I decided that, hey, everything starts from environmental justice. So I got a job with Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice. And the reason why I said that everything starts with environmental justice is um, here in Bayview Hunters Point, we have the radioactive shipyard. And Green Action and Marie Harrison and Bayview Hunters Point Mothers and Fathers I would always see them actively fighting. And now that I'm a part of this, I am more aware. And they have actually educated me on the reasons why they are fighting. 
And I want to educate my people on environmental justice from a scientific perspective to let them know how environmental justice is, is also, you know, a social injustice. If you sit in, in, in a contaminated place, contamination causes truancy. It's already been scientifically proven that truancy then leads to jail, you know, and I, that's what I want to inform my people on. You know, I, I got with Green Action. I get to do a lot of training. Many of our coworkers get to fly around, go to indigenous people's lands. Um, I really love doing that, but I want my people to be more aware of the environment and how it is actually affecting us right now. You may, may not think that the sea level rising might not affect you right now, but it is. Climate change is very real. And with the fossil fuels burning, you know, of course we want electric vehicles, but I want people to see it from a scientific perspective. You can see it right now with the electric vehicle, how environmental justice is affecting our social justice. The parking spots are all taken up. You know, right now during COVID, you see the restaurants still with their patios outside, even though the restaurants are open. It's only going to get worse. And the reason why I bring that up, you know, and I call myself a scientific revolutionist, you know, I bring that up because losing sleep and in minority neighborhoods, we are losing sleep because of the transportation. And when you have lack of sleep, you get high blood pressure, heart disease. And, um, you know, that's what my organization does. And I look at stuff from a scientific perspective, you know, right now, green action, we are, we're working for zero waste and dumping and burning clean air and clean water, clean up contaminated sites like the Indian Basin. I'm all for the park that they are trying to do at Indian Basin, but they still need to clean up the shoreline there. You know, we're also working on energy and climate justice, protection of indigenous land, environmental justice and civil rights, trying to clean up our community. We do have a website where people can go ahead and report illegal dumping and it's called um, www.b as in boy, v, h, p, like baby hunters point dash Ivan dot org. And the community members, any residents in D10 can go ahead on there and report any illegal dumping. You can take pictures. And it starts with cleaning up our neighborhood. It starts with environmental justice. Um, It starts with our community getting out there and just being more aware of what's happening. We do also have a Baby Hunters Point Youth Academy coming up. It's already full, but I did post it on my um, Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Bean, which is my Black Empowerment um, Network social media account. So if anyone is interested, we might have a few more spots available. You can hit me up at Sabrina at GreenAction.org. Um, What else we do in the community? We do a lot of proposals. We do a lot of um, giving out supplies during the COVID. But a lot of people are not aware of us because we work behind scenes. We are at City Hall. We're on the Zoom. We're trying to talk, speak against the proposals that's being done in our community behind our backs. And our people are not aware of it because of the verbiage. Uh, We have actively closed down the dirty P. Jenny Hunters Point plant and Baby Hunters Point. Um, we have actively stopped polluting facilities in Oakland, California, in conjunction with Communities for Better Environment in Oakland, California. Uh, we have partnered with the Gila River, River Indian Community in Arizona. As I stated, we do a lot of traveling. We couldn't travel this year, but we did. Um, I did get a chance to do the climate reality training with um, Vice President Al Gore, which I was very much um, appreciated of that training. But basically, I'm here not only to speak about environmental justice, but just to wake my people up. You know, I'm out here in this community. I volunteer. I helped set up the tent site at Martin Luther King Park when everybody was homeless before Pier 94. I will partner with anyone that needs someone to come out to a protest. I partner with From the Heart because we are more powerful in numbers than we are by ourselves. And, um, Let's see. I also wanted to touch bases on the fact that we are also in Arizona, California, Hawaii, um, Utah as well. And, you know, I'm all around the community. And I just, 
I just want to help my people, and that's why I'm here. I appreciate being on the show. I did have a presentation, but it might have been a little bit too long. But um, basically, I'm out here just trying to save my people and just making people more aware of, you know, climate change, environmental justice, looking at the scientific perspective of how they are, you know, just selling us out. And we're dying over here. I really believe it's premeditated murder, in my opinion. But um, I'm just out here trying to fight and bring pe- get people more aware. That's it. And I appreciate you having me on here. And that's why we wanted to have you on, because you are definitely one of them hidden gems in our community. And you definitely have a lot of knowledge and information uh, for our community. We definitely would love to, you know, have you on, John, if it's okay, um, to come and talk to our young men with our uh, virtual young men's mentoring group um, to talk about um, environmental justice. I think that that's important for them to know about and get a head start about. So I would definitely love to, you know, set something up with you and have the conversation around you coming and presenting something to those young people, but then also coming on our Educational Thursday segment and just giving a whole educational se- um, segment and training to our, our people in the community on this platform. Um, also, at some point, uh, maybe we can set up a Zoom meeting um, sooner than later. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do in our community. When I first met you and we had that long conversation, I was like, this sister right here, she on to something. She's super, super, super deep. Um, and that's what, you know, I told John, like, hey, we got to get her on. She's super deep, bro. Like, like she on the stuff that a lot of people in our communities ain't aware of. And I think that that would make all our communities, uh, make our community so different is that we all is a different type of jewel and we all a different type of gym, but the value is the same, right? But some people or other people might not view it as the same, but I think that all of us are diamonds, gems, emeralds, rubies, that that has the same value, but we have to recognize the value for ourselves. So you are definitely one of them hidden gems in our community and we wanted to highlight you. I love you. Thank you for all the work that you do in our community system. Uh, thank and, uh, you yeah, so much, Rico. Yeah, I just wanted to say before we close out, um, you're definitely welcome to come on and do that presentation. We'll set up mm-hmm. a Zoom link. We'll set up a Zoom link. <laughs> yeah. We want that information to our people. So thank you again, Sabrina, for doing all the work you do. Stand true to it. Keep your foot to the ground and making sure things are happening, making sure that our com- our community is not being pushed over with uh, the wrong policies or the wrong information. So thank you again for being a hidden gem tonight. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next hidden gym. A sister that's so amazing, so important to our young ladies. I have to, I have to say this and, and, and emphasize this um, because we have a lot of young girls in our community, black and brown communities, you know, looking up for role models. We have enough of the wrong role models, right? And we want our young women to inspire. We want them to taste their dreams. We want them to do the things that they believe they can do. This sister here that I'm about to introduce as a hidden gem, Simone Davis, not only is she a hidden gem, she is Miss Arizona, right? So for our young black and brown girls out there, she is definitely an important figure for our young ladies because one, she's in Arizona and we know Arizona has their challenges with inclusion uh, when it comes to the black community, recognizing Dr. Martin Luther King uh, holiday, uh, it is a red state. <laughs> and for her to be a, a, a beautiful sister, to be represented as Miss Arizona, it is, is amazing. It's a powerful and powerful thing for our, our, our young ladies to see. And not only is she Miss Arizona, she is heading off to run for Miss USA. So. I have to say we have to get behind this sister. I put the link in there earlier. We're going to have her put the link in there. She needs your vote. She needs your support. You know, we need to have a sister up there top representing this USA. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce you guys to Miss Simone Davis. She's the founder of May. She is a single mother. She came from St. Louis to a couple places across the country, landed in Arizona. Ain't no telling where. She gonna go after this, man. But we just gotta get behind her and make sure she get, you know, what I'm saying Miss USA. But without further ado, I'm gonna introduce her through her co- uh, corporation, Made. 
She's about empowering women. She's all about uplifting her sisters. And um, it's very important. So I'm just gonna read her quick bio. Um, Made is about um, inspiring and bringing diversity through change. They inspire, educate, develop, and brand leaders for our future generation within our community. Educate and empower women to stand resolute in the face of adversity using core principles of mindset, agility, de determination, uh, economic empowerment through service and education. That's deep, right? So we need that. We got to keep building our sisters up. So without further ado, Rico, you got anything you want to say before we bring her on? Rick, you good? You got <laughs> hey, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> hey, yo, I spoke to Simone yesterday and like the conversation was like so deep. I didn't really, really want to get off the phone. You know how like you had like them deep conversations with somebody and the conversation is so healing. The conversation is so uplifting. The conversation is so inspiring that you lose track of time. You lose track of the zone you in, like you like in fourth dimension, right? So it felt like fourth dimension because she is on a whole different level. She reminds me of my conversation with Sabrina. Like it takes you to a whole different world when you're dealing with people who are like-minded like you. We are not the same, we are Martians, I, 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 for real. So I, I definitely just wanted to say like, you're definitely amazing. You're definitely inspiring. Uh, I was showing my daughter your page and, and, and telling her your story. And my daughter, she is, my little princess and you know she's a real girly girl so you know she she loves you so she's becoming a fan and and I'm and and I'm I'm I'm, ha I'm like baby we're going to follow her because this is how I envision you um in terms of you're beautiful but not just beautiful on the outside on the inside you have a beauty that I recognize and then also your intellect and you're about being free um and, and having owning business and and and, and empowering individuals financially and, and being about getting it. So I'm gonna let you speak because I mean you can you can tell your story better than anybody else, but you definitely are one of those gems and please tell the folks out there what you got going on. Please. Thank y'all so much. That was heartwarming for sure. Um boosting me up a little bit. I appreciate that. Um but as it was already stated by John Henry. Um, I am the current Miss United States, uh, well, Miss Arizona United States. I am competing for Miss United States. I'm set to leave um, next week. Um, well, Sunday is when I leave. But my whole little mission um, all started with me um, developing my own business, which is called MADE, which stands for uh, Manifesting and Developing Empires. And a lot of events that I was hosting in Arizona. I've only been in Arizona for one year, but people were so amazed by the traction that I was gaining while in Arizona that everybody wanted to figure out, okay, who is this girl that's coming to Arizona? She's meeting the mayor, she's meeting council people, she's taking pictures, she's at their breakfast, like, who is she? So I started a, uh, developing a, um, a social media presence and, um, Manifesting and developing empire's core principle is mindset, agility, determination, and economic empowerment. So I had a lot of women coming up to me, young girls coming up to me, asking me, you know, we've seen on your Facebook page that you are a mother of four children. Um, and I'm 31, so y'all can do the calculation on that. <laughs> and they wanted to know, how are you able to withstand? Like, how are you able to have a full-time job? How are you able to um, have your own business? How are you able to be involved in the community? And basically what I told people is I had to change my mindset. Uh, my whole entire life, I have been the 1%. I had children early. I didn't learn how to read until I was in the fifth grade. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. So everything that I've ever had, I had to work towards. So I've always been the 1%. And once I got in mind, and once I really understood that everything that I wanted and everything I needed had to be with me changing my mindset, that's how I started developing those core principles um, for MADE. And that's what I started educating women on is first, you have to have, you have to change your mindset. Then after your mindset, you have to have agility and determination. Once you have agility and determination, then you are able to use your testimony and your story as a foundation 
as economic empowerment. Like we need people to share their downfalls, their unfavorable fate. Um, a lot of people go through things and sometimes shy away from it and don't want to talk about it. And I said, I want to use my platform and my history and my testimony to show the other Simones out there that you don't have to be ashamed. You could, no matter what you go through, whatever it is that you want out of life, as long as you have the right mindset, you can achieve it. I mean, look at me. I'm sitting here only being in Arizona for one year, one full year, and I miss Arizona, something that I was told I couldn't be because I had children out of wedlock. And now look at me, I'm about to go peace, compete for Miss United States. So my whole, you know, platform is just encouraging women to just don't give up, like stand resolute in the face of adversity. As long as you have that mindset, you can conquer it all. Wow, that's deep. Amazing, powerful stuff you got going on there, Simone. Uh, definitely give people your uh, social media handles, how to get a hold of you, how to... Um, vote for you, all that information. And then you can also put it in the chat, but verbally tell people so they can hear it and see it and follow you and then put it in the chat as well. Yeah, absolutely. So my social media handle, I have two Facebooks, Simone by Nature, S-I-M-O-N-E-B-Y Nature, N-A-T-U-R-E. And then I have my um, business um, Instagram, which is Simone is made, S-I-M-O-N-E is made, M-A-D-E. Um, you can find me on Facebook, which is Simone, and then my first name spelled backwards, which is E-N-O-M-I-S. So it says Simone Nomis. And for the voting, yes, um, for Miss United States right now, we have a People's Choice Award that I definitely want to win as well. Um, and you, in order to place a vote, you pay a dollar. So say if you wanted to do 20 votes, then of course it'll be $20. Um, and there is a link on my Facebook page, which is really awesome. Um, a councilwoman reached out to me yesterday. We had our meeting today and she's standing behind me. I made a post about that earlier today. And she was like, you know, I love everything that you're doing. I feel like the city needs to see this. So I got to meet with a, a councilwoman today from Arizona and she's going to take me under her wing and make sure that, um, you know, I'm implementing things in, within our community. So already I haven't even got my crown for Miss United States and already things are um, taken off for me. So if you go on my page, there is a link that you could click on and you can place your $1 vote. I ask that you guys to please share, you know, the more that we can get it out is the more, uh, the better chance that I have at becoming uh, people's choice. And I just ask you guys to follow my journey because I really believe this is the platform for me to reach the masses when it comes to women empowerment. That's what's up. So you guys get behind her, you got my vote. And uh, we just appreciate you coming on. Keep pushing through. Keep being an inspiration for our young ladies out there. And uh, just just keep pushing through. We got you. We support you. You got you got options. And whenever you need help, you know, we're here to back you up and support you at both sides of the conversation. Rico, you want to say anything before we bring in the next Kim? Yeah, I, just, I mean, I just want to say that, I mean, like she has a lot going on. And, you know, just that story is 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 many of our stories. And you know, she said it as perfect as possible is that our stories need to be out there. Our stories need to be told. And, you know, that's how we learn. And we learn sociably is through hearing, hearing each other. That's the indigenous way of our people. Um, and you said it as perfect as it possibly can be said. And, you know, in this moment that we're in with all this racism that's going on and, you know, the police shootings and all this different stuff that's going on, people of color, we got to stand together. We got to stick together. We got a sister here who represents our nation. Um, she just doesn't represent Arizona. She just doesn't represent herself. She represents all indigenous people of all the tribes of the Americas or of all the different, uh, of, the, of the world, right? So we have to support her. And the only way that, you know, she gets to the next point or the next level is through our support and us being our her biggest fan. So, you know, thank you so much, Simone. Definitely amazing. Definitely an honor to have you on and representing not just for yourself, but also for all the women that's out there and the little babies, the little princesses <laughs> that you're going to uh, attract also. So thank you so much. 
All right, man. So we're going to move on to our next hidden gem. Uh, you know, this brother right here is, is a powerful brother. I've been knowing him for a long time. Coming up to Juvenile, working, you know, at both sides of the conversation, we're about unifying our people, black and brown community. This brother is a definitely a staple of that, working with our black and brown brothers and sisters. Um, no other than our next hidden gem, I have to say, uh, Charlie, we call him Charlie Hustle, but Charlie Morales, uh, San Francisco native. Uh, doing a lot of stuff for our community. So I'm just going to go ahead and read his bio and bring him in and let him fill you guys in with the rest. Um, <clears throat> so Charlie is a first generation uh, college graduate who was raised in a low income, mixed status, Salvadorian family, uh, consisting of seven, seven sisters, five brothers and 20 nephews and nieces across San Francisco. He is currently a higher educational counselor, counselor and a faculty member at Skyline College, Chabot College and Lady College. He earned his associate degree from City College of San Francisco, his bachelor degree from UC San Diego, his master's degree from the University of Southern California, and he is considering his doctoral uh, degree in the near future as well. As an equity-minded counselor, he aims to bridge the equity gap for historically underserved populations. Charlie has served on um, the Male Student of Color Task Force. He's conducted research on the Latinx graduate students He's piloted the Math Early Alert Program and specialized in building college pipelines for at-risk students that are on probation into achieving self-regulated learners. Whenever he is not counseling students, you can find Charlie uh, collaborating with the local nonprofits, addressing the poverty, housing and food and security, violence prevention with the COVID-19 and many other causes. He's definitely in our community, in our jails, working with our young people. He's connected with the Latin community. You know, when you do the work, people know who you are. If anything is going on in our Latin community, definitely Charlie knows what's going on. We always reach out to him. Um, he's a go-to guy. So without further ado, Rico, if you have anything you want to say about Charlie before we pass it over, you can. If not, we just go pass it over and let Charlie go ahead and uh, let the people know what's going on with him. I just want to say it's an honor to have Charlie on here, man, because like this dude is like a living legend. Like, <laughs> like growing up in the city, like if you didn't know Charlie Hustle, man, you wasn't from the city. So, you know, I grew up uh, in Filmo, but um, I grew up also on 24th and San Bruno, uh, right there near the back streets. And uh, I knew a lot of folks around there. And, you know, he's one of those dudes that, you know, he from the community and, you know, a lot of people, he just have an energy that's grav that, that people can gravitate to, right? Um, because he's outgoing, he's outspoken, he's a little bit different uh, than most individuals. So, you know, I'm just happy to have him on and all the amazing stuff that he's doing. Um, I, I, I know some of the history that he come from and for him to get, go from there into where he's at now is like, it speaks volumes to the intellectual minds of our people. So Without further ado, I'm gonna let Charlie uh, tell the rest because I, I mean, I know he got an amazing story. That might be like a whole segment within itself. <laughs> Hold on, let me. I got to, I got to jump in and pull my OG card out because he's also an us for us senior mentor. You feel me? I just want to make sure I throw that out there. All right, mi gente. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We made it. We alive and free. Blessed to be. My name is Charlie El Morales. Uh, um, I am a higher educational counselor. As you can see in the back on top of my screen, it says San Francisco. It's the San Francisco flag. And so born and raised here in the city. My family moved all over. I was born in General Hospital, 1988. And so from there, my family uh, immigrated from El Salvador and they had five siblings at the time. And so uh, they immigrated here and then in 1980. And so we, my family's been here ever since. I have seven sisters uh, and five brothers. I got 20 nephews and nieces. And so growing up in a, in a mixed status family, meaning some of my siblings were uh, undocumented and some of our siblings were uh, born here. So we had a citizenship status. And we had to move, we didn't have the privilege of staying in one location. So we moved from the Mission District to the Brick Homes in Sunnydale. From there, we moved to the Bayview. And then we were fortunate enough to uh, purchase a house at Crocker Amazon, top of the hill area. And so ever since then, I've been uh, across uh, the, the uh, other parts of uh, the city as well. Lakeview, Petrel Hill, uh, Portola, you name it, you know. And so I did my undergraduate, uh, I went through K through 12 in the city. 
uh, in uh, Daly City, and then I did my grad, I did my undergrad work at UC San Diego. So I lived there for five years. I got my bachelor's degree, came back over here. Um, I had, um, I was in a variety of different um, uh, ventures at that time. I even started my own party bus uh, for about a year and so. And so I had a transportation uh, company. I bought a party bus and then flipped it and then started driving people around. Cause at that time I was a lot younger, had more energy. I like to party, even though I'm 32 years sober, I don't drink, I don't smoke. That's part of what goes into the environmental justice piece that Sabrina talked about. And so those conscious decisions and understanding our environment around us and how we're uh, the black and brown community are disproportionately uh, targeted and prone to uh, having uh, these diseases and uh, earlier deaths to the stress, uh, these stress factors uh, that they talked about. Um, and so growing up in a big family, um, I was the 10th out of 13 children. And so I was, I was the most outgoing growing up. I was more shy and reserved, but I observed and I paid attention. And so that's one of my strengths. I was able to observe and pay attention. I can tell who's bullshitting and who's, who's keeping it real and what's, what's real and what's fake. And that's something I learned from all a bunch of my OGs. And so I took that and flipped that into the, uh, my college degree. I hated, I did not like education at all. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And so, but I understood that education is a filtering out process to have access to power. And if you can understand how the systems of oppression work and against our communities, pre predominantly the black and Latino community, then you need to understand the solutions and what you can do and, and take ownership of your life to kind of uh, counteract that. And so uh, I did, you know, so it was, it was trial and error for me because I left the Bay Area at, at 18 years old. I started off college homeless. I was homeless for a week. I put everything I own in three garbage bags and I had to find housing and then classes. And then I was the only one out the Bay Area. And back then I used to rock a gold grill a SF hat, and then I used to uh, rock the jabos, the baggy pants, and the tall tees that go to my knees. And so uh, that was the environment that I grew up. That's what I knew. That's what was popular. That's how I attracted the ladies at that time. You know what I mean? And so um, as the years progressed, I evolved and learned and understood um, how all of these systems work. And so um, I ended up, ended up going back to, uh, to get my master's degree at USC in LA. I did two years there. And at the same time, uh, I came back. And so uh, throughout all that time, what I learned about all my time in schooling is that um, I understand it at a different level to where I can go come back. The point, the whole point of doing all of that was just to come back so I could show and tell my youngsters the game, hey, don't go here. You should consider doing this and provide allocating the resources that I can leverage from the university and the money that gets funded to the universities to help these youngsters either attain a job, get a certificate, get an associate's degree, uh, learn English, um, and advance in any way uh, possible. So it, it, uh, it varies, and because our communities are so complex, there's so many issues at large. It, um, I, before when I was younger, like I said, I just stood back. I was like, man, how come, how come our community is not, uh, uh, why am I seeing all my friends getting killed? Why am I at more funerals than weddings? Why, uh, why is it, uh, why in 2017, uh, the cops killed 172 people and, and, and about 30% were black uh, males and about 40% uh, uh, were Latino males. Why, why is that happening? And so in order to understand that, I had to utilize uh, the university to learn how to research and, and find these resources so that I could allocate to my students. And so uh, to current day, I work at three colleges right now, uh, Chabot College, uh, Laney, Laney College, and uh, Skyline College. I teach, uh, um, I'm teaching four counseling classes right now. And so I leverage that, the knowledge that I gain through um, all of these organizations and volunteering and the everything, I put it all together to lace my youngsters with the game to understand how to navigate the community college because a majority of folks, uh, there's a bunch of barriers that exist in policies and practice that uh, do not allow uh, black and brown folks or people of color 
uh, to graduate and attain their degree so they can get a better paying job and access to more better health and access to more power. And so that's kind of more of the realms that I do uh, for my career now. But at the same time, I knew that it was gonna take a lot more than just being at the schools because the people that I wanted to reach were not in the schools. They dropped out, they got pushed out, they got expelled, they got locked up. Uh, some of them are slanging drugs, some of them are, are you know, uh, the violence that existed that I see in the day to day affected me very negatively. And so I finally took power into my own hands. And one of my nephews got killed in 2014. And that's how I kind of got connected through Uncle Damien. He came to support. Uh, and so we connected and not till a little later, he brought me in and he knew he um, I asked him to come to speak to my class when I was teaching at Leadership High School uh, in the city. And so he, he was with United Players at that time. And so they came in and spoke to my youngsters because I, I work with uh, um, uh, males, uh, predominantly males uh, there at that time. And so from then he was like, hey, we have this going on. You want to come out? So I just started coming out. So from then we've been feeding the homeless with the City Eats. Um, well, he brought me into Omega Boys Club on Monday and Wednesday nights. That's how I got to meet most of y'all here today. And then... Um, and then uh, we also uh, provided uh, uh, well, food. And then we also did a bunch of different mentoring uh, and different events. And uh, we actually pretty much uh, uh, help solidify and uplift the different community-based organizations throughout the city. So like uh, we support the all NSF and the mission. Um, I'm also a volunteer for Carnival San Francisco along with my homie Pedro. And so we're interconnected. The city is blessed to have so much talent and so much uh, fuego uh, uh, within within our people, and that's that's the that's the thing about the Frisco game. It's just like you know what we don't gotta wait for you to come up with rules or opportunities. We are gonna create our own opportunities. We don't we're not gonna knock on your door. We are gonna create our own doors and create our own tables and create our own equity. And that's that's pretty much what I'm all about. And so if I gotta if I gotta come out and show my youngsters how to tie tie, I'm gonna go to juvie and do that because. That's what we did, right? And, and to show them some game. And then if they need some professional headshots, I'm gonna go pull out, I'm gonna whip out the cannon and I'm out to, I'm out to shoot them, but not this shoot, <laughs> I'm out to shoot them and, and elevate their game to be professionals. And so that's the longevity. And we're, we're in, in, in essence, we're hope dealers. We're providing hope to our youngsters and community so that we don't have to see them dead or, or, or go to any more funerals because that's a lot, that's, that is the divisive, a divide and conquer uh, a mentality that, that, that exists. And so in order for us as a community to come together, we have to address the issues that's happening uh, at the different levels and, and stop the beef, drop the guns and, and, uh, and bring the peace and then uh, break bread and then move forward. And so by, by uh, supporting at every, any level possible uh, for our leaders is how we're gonna move forward. And so that's kind of where I want to leave it off right there. Man, that's deep, man. <laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you, Charlie. Um, you know, your story is a testimony, you know, for our young people out there that believe they can't get it or they can't do it or they can't achieve goals. Here's a, here's a, here's a Latin brother that came from nothing and made something out of his opportunity, didn't cry, didn't complain, went through the trials, went through the tribulations still fighting, still giving, still handing it back, still passing the torch, uh, doing the work, man. This is what this is all about, man. And like Charlie said, that's how we are in Frisco. We ain't gonna wait. That's why me and Rico, we doing this hidden gym show, right? We're not gonna wait for the, the news media to pull up to tell our community how much great work we're doing. We're not gonna wait till the, till the high headlines go to be like, hey, they doing the work. You know, we wanna make sure we highlight y'all and let them know, hey, the community go highlight you. We gonna let our community who deal with deal with you and work with you know that this is what's going on this is what these brothers and sisters are doing tap in with them help support them keep uplifting them keep, keep bigging them up and um that's what we that's what we about man so just want to say thank you charlie i know the work i work side by side with you you know just seeing the young people reaction when we do the stuff we do me you damien at the jail like you said teaching them how to tie ties the confidence the the esteem that they feel you know what i'm saying the swagger you know what I mean? That belief and that hope and that fire that's lit in them, man, is, 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 is priceless. People don't even know. And um, just thank you for being behind the scenes, doing stuff, still tapping in with the community, still reaching out and helping out. So 
Thank you very much, Tali. Uh, Rico, you want to say something final before we move on to our last hidden gem? I definitely, I definitely always got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say, you know what, I, I commend you, uh, Charlie, for your your hard work and um, everything that you have done and that you continue to do, um, especially the approach that you take um, without biasness and uh, you take the humane approach to everything. And I think that that's, uh, that's a blessing. A lot of people don't know how to do that. And, and just listening to you, um, it's it sounds like you 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 care more for humanity opposed to the individual sections that we section things off into and that's just that's that's amazing that's a blessing within itself um i love you i care for you i i i, I don't know if you remember I, I met you a long time ago when your when your nephew passed away that's when i actually first 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 met you um and you know i send love out um to you even around that um, I know it's, it's it's still hard for you and your family um, losing anyone. You know, my cousin was killed by police due to police violence, um, and it's hard every single day for me. You know, waking up knowing that I'll never see his face again. But I definitely, definitely commend you for your strength. Um, you're a perfect. I mean, like, like you're a perfect example. Even if you're not working with people, right? Like, like, <laughs> like your story coming from you know San Francisco. Um, that big of a family most likely you know you come from poverty like all of us and you know and and you someone who said you know what i'm gonna beat the odds i'm not gonna become a product of this environment and i'm gonna create my own product and i can hear the product and when you talk i see the product um in your face I, you know you got a glow that you know like you know what i mean it it's just what it is so you know keep up with the, the amazing work and i think you know john you know again I, I know everybody that we, we, we talk to, I'll probably say it. Uh, we definitely need to bring him on to come talk to our young mentees, young men. Um, but then also it will be good to have him come on uh, one of our educational Thursdays and educate some folks on something. I, I, we, we, we definitely should set something up with him. Uh, that would be amazing. Yes, definitely. We're going to do that. Can, 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 I, can, I give, can I give one more little prop, John Henry? My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. So what he didn't say, and I always say this, first of all, he should have gave me more props, but that's <laughs> but Charlie had the cleanest 6'9 Camaro in San Francisco. I don't care what nobody said. And he sold that so he could go to school for his education, man. That was enough for me. Man, that is true. I forgot about that. That is powerful. Uh, you talk about choices and sacrifice. He took a hundred thousand dollar old school, sold it to pay for his college education. Now that's deep, and that just go to show you how important your education is, and and what he did with the decisions. And we try to teach our young I would, people. I wouldn't have done it. Make <laughs> make the young people make the, the decision. So we get another close one, here. Another one. Huh? Another one is coming. Another right. one is coming in his blessing. So yeah, you know I mean he sold that one to get another one. So it, it's gonna come. Yeah, you know I mean that's it's right. just not in the time that he probably wanted. It's but it's already being manifest in the air through his higher power. So I'm gonna buy him one. <laughs> so <laughs> we should go have one. <laughs> so so now we coming down to our last hit gym. I don't even consider this last because man, Pedro, 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 man. Y'all about to get to introduce. I'm about to introduce y'all to Pedro Marquis, man. This brother, like Charlie, man, is all about our young people, he about our adults, rehabilitation giving back to the community man i reached out to this brother because i know the work that he do if you look in the dictionary you look up compassion humility humanity this brother picture should be there man because he does work and he treat all of our our people that's locked up incarcerated as human beings he treat them with dignity they listen he give them game he's consistent he work with them he don't give up on them. He don't sell them a dream and say, hey, when you get out, I'm gonna work with you and I'm gonna leave you behind. He's always gathering information from the, for the community. Um, I, I mean, so much stuff I could say, Pedro, man. I've been knowing him for a short time. It's been about a year and a half or something since he's been at Juvenile. But I talked to Ayula, a couple of my other people that see the work that he does in the county jail. People talk highly about you. 
a lot of our Latinx brothers that 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 came from juvenile. We connected them to you and um, at at the San Francisco County Jail. A lot of them said, "Man, he's been a blessing. He's been helping. He he's been you know just reaching out, getting information back to the community, doing things." Um, Pedro, man, just want to say thank you as a Latin brother helping out the black and brown community, man. I'm going to go ahead and read your short bio, bio. And I know it's short, but it's a lot that you do. Um, but just want to say thank you and thank you for, for, for finding time to come on for us tonight, man, because I think this is important as we continue to unite the black and brown community. We come up with more things to keep us involved and figure out strategies. Um, it's just important to have you and Charlie here tonight. And um, I'm just going to read your bio and then I'm going to turn it over to Rico and then you. Uh, so Pedro is a San Francisco educator and a community ambassador. He's currently working for the San Francisco County Jail, the Juvenile Hall. He's a coordinator at the Mission Food Hub, San Francisco Unified School District, students, city college graduate. He obtained his teaching credentials from San Jose State University, still doing the work, still handling his business. I'm gonna go ahead and turn over Rico. You wanna say something then I'm gonna pass over to Pedro and let him go into all the great things that he's doing and the things that he got upcoming. Yeah, I, I just wanna say I've, I've heard of uh, Pedro um, in the work that I do in the county jail. So I, I, I used to run a program in there called Raw Talk for Life. Um, and I used to come in and do a lot of motivational speaking and talking to folks. Um, and it was through Five Keys, um, also through uh, jo jo Joanna Hernandez and uh, uh, Ayula, Clayton. Oh man, it's a whole staff up there that uh, <laughs> that was up there. And, 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 and definitely your name is one of the names that I kept hearing. I never got the opportunity to, to meet you because my time at the jail kind of got cut short because I was ready to transition to uh, new work. Um, but definitely, um, I, all I ever heard was amazing things um, about the work that you're doing. And folks like, Rico, you need to connect with Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. Pedro. I'm like, I don't know him. Uh, I would love to, but right now, I don't want to do the jail work. I want to do the violence prevention work. Uh, that's where my heart is. Um, but definitely, I definitely want to get back into the work. So right now, it's going to be definitely the opportunity to get back in. So you know, before you get on or, or before you go, can you please leave your information? Because I, I would love to connect with you and figure out, you know, things that I can do to support you uh, in your efforts inside the jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for having me here. I'm, I'm very honored to be next to um, Sabrina, Simone. I had a chance, you know, Enrico, I had a chance and, and the privilege to work, you know, with John at a juvenile hall, I had the privilege to, to know Charlie for a couple of years, a lot of years now, and some of his family. And, uh, and I had a chance you know, to work with um, Uncle Damon. And um, I, I also have to say, you know, I've seen Uncle Damon working with uh, and doing things you know, with Anthony Percent. You guys work and doing good things. And uh, that's what motivates me. That's what motivates me to keep going. Uh, a short little thing that I'm gonna say is, I had a mentor named Rosario Anaya from the, the mission, very well known through the city with the mayors, the governor, Diane Feinstein, everybody. And then she took me under her wing and explained me a lot of things. And I used to watch her how she did things and she taught me how to shake hands with people. And then she used to tell me all the, her stories about Ms. Dolores Huerta and Mr. Cesar Chavez. And I was like, oh yeah, so you used to have lunch and she would tell me all the stories. And that opened my eyes. And I remember reading a quote from Dr. King who said the most important question is, what are you doing for others? And I see myself and then when we hit that fork in life, right? Either you're gonna go right, you go left. Either you're gonna be a headache for your family, and most of all, you're gonna be a headache for yourself, or you can go to school and try to do the thing, you know, normal. And I decided, you know what? I, I had to spend my time in education. I wanna do good. I wanna give to my community. 
And that's how right now, you know, I end up uh, being, you know, coordinating and helping, volunteering at the food hub over here in the mission. We also do, that's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 to and up to like three o'clock, two o'clock. And Thursdays, we do COVID testing. And now we're doing testing for kids from 10 to two at 19 in Florida over here in the mission. So if you have a kid, you could always bring them. They're going to get tested. If you want food, then you come and get tested. And I volunteer there. I said it before that to me, the word community has a big U in the middle. It has a big U in the middle. And it's how you get involved in the community. And how am I helping others? How is it that, and I realized that helping others is the way I help myself. I also like Charlie, you know, I, I, I quit drinking, I don't do drugs. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the feeling of giving my number one source of survival, which is my mind. And, uh, and I keep the same, right? But to everybody that is listening to us here, um, we might not have what you need, but we got something for you, something. We might not have everything that you need, but we might have something for you. We could give you a resource to education, jobs, training, and you got to take that. You, you, you have to, we have to be humble. If one common denominator that you could take out of all this chat, this whole hour, is that all the panelists here, we, we knew that we had to have a mentor. We knew that we had to lean on somebody else's knowledge to move ahead. We reached out to somebody. I reached out to somebody, I had a mentor. So if you're out there and if you wanna change, lean on somebody else's knowledge that is gonna do good for you. Reach out, be a mentor, get a mentor. Be a mentor or get a mentor. Um, it's, it's something you know that we have in common here and there's never too late to change, you know? I work at uh, the county jail, I go to juvenile hall, I used to go to San Quentin, and um, I'm a big believer that good people make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Uh, there's a reason why we have erasers on our pencils. There's a reason why we have bumpers on our car. The backspace key on the keyboard is because we make mistakes. But the whole purpose of life is to be a better version of yourself. 10 years ago, I say 10 years ago, you should be different now. Tomorrow, you could change today and be a different person tomorrow. But you got to change and make that change happen. Don't just get stuck on one day. Better yet say, this is day one, which is totally different. One day, I'm going to wait. You got to say day one. I learned from all of you guys here. Uh, all you need to have is just my, my, my phone number or my email and try me, test me. I might not have everything for you, but I have something. I, I could lead you to a job. I could give you a job uh, uh, information or where to get training at the Success Center. A lot of places, education. And if I don't have it, I'm resourceful enough to see if Uncle Damon has it or Charlie. Or maybe Ms. Simone has it, or maybe Serena has it, maybe John Henry, or maybe Rico has it. But that's the way that you have to uh, approach life. Keep going. You heard all this motivation here, and the common denominator is volunteering. Because when you volunteer, you shake hands, you network, and then you get opportunities. And I think at, at this time in life, we, we have to um, make the right decisions. Like Ms. Serena was saying, think about your eating habits, exercising, take care of your credit score. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes in a package. When we at county jail, I get to work with people in a position when the mind is open. But I pray and I hope that when people get out to stay committed and be truthful to what they said when everything is dark, but it's possible, we see it here, we, we all make uh, um, sacrifices on, on, on what we do. And um, that's pretty much it for me.
And I just want to encourage, you know, people to, 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 to reach out to somebody, to be a, a mentor to somebody. Five kids, four kids, two kids, one kid, it makes it different. But be a mentor, have a mentee. I invite you. And if you don't, if you, if, if you don't have somebody to look up to, get a mentor. I, I just can't, can say, you know, how help, how happy I am and, 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 and how, how honored I am to be part of this uh, talk, this conversation. And um, I'll give my, my, my phone number. That's all you need. Text me or my email right there. I don't know if you're able to see it. All you have to do is just send me an email and then, and, and then I'll be pleased and, and, and I'll do my best to assist you on, on whatever you need. I just want to say thank you, John Henry. I appreciate, I admire the work you do. Uncle Damon, I admire the work you do. Charlie, I, I, I admire the work you do. Everything that you've done. I even forgot, yeah, that we do Carnival together. Ms. Serena, I admire the work you do. And I also have to say, Rico, thank you so much for having me. I admire the work you do. Ms. Simone, I wish you the best. You're already a winner for everybody. And right. You give us, you give us that, that sense of pride. Like, yeah, you know, that's Miss Arizona. I'm going to tell my, my friends now. It's like, yeah, yeah, there you go. We're, we're in a panel together. And, and, and that's what we do. We got to stay together. We got to roll together, like John Henry said. Black and brown and everybody else, our Filipino brothers, everybody, we got to stick together. Because, you know, together, you know, we, 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 it's more powerful. So thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Gracias a todos. Thank you for, for everything. And, and I appreciate it. Man, for sure, Pedro. See, it was a reason why you was the last one to speak. The power of your words, the motivation. Now I can't sleep. See, you gave me, you got me pumped up. I was trying to come down, and now you didn't pump me up. I can't even go to sleep now. Four hours of sleep just went to two because you just motivated me. Um, you definitely always inspiring. I mean, you didn't even talk about the coffee business and the beans that you're doing for our young people, but it's okay because we know you're doing the work. I mean, if people want to find out more what they what you're doing, definitely reach out to him. He got his email up there. Reach out to Pedro, good brother. And um, like he said, united we stand, divided we fall. Here at both sides of the conversation, we believe in the three-pack love, food, knowledge, and education. That's what we always have to give, right? And to make change, Pedro, what do we tell the kids that do now? If you want to change, you got to change people, places, and things. And that's our mission always, trying to get them to think about that. And um, it, it's very important. And thank everybody that's on this panel tonight. Rico put a question in. I know it's getting late. We just want everybody to take a quick uh, second to look at that question while Rico says last words. And then just we just want everybody to kind of answer that question, see what you guys think, what we could do. Um, because part of both sides of the conversation, we believe that through communication, there's a process of healing. And uh, we always want to try to come up with a solution, right? We, we, we always hear about the problems, the problems, the problems, but we also want to hear the solution and uh, feed that information. So I'm gonna let Rico say his last words and then we'll, whoever want to go first to answer the question, uh, go ahead. Hey, somebody just, somebody just got shot on, uh, down the street, man. I gotta go, they just hit me up. But I appreciate, love all y'all, man. Stay smooth. All right, Uncle, all right, Uncle hit me later on, I'll be up. Sad. Man, uh, and never stop, man. Never stop. This, this is why the work, this is why it's important to have mentors. It's important to have people doing work. Y'all see the type of communities we're dealing with. This violence won't stop. Not only is the cops killing us, we got our own people killing us. Black on black crime, man. We got to stop it. Get it together, young people. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, so I, I mean, I just want to end it with, you know, just you guys are all amazing. I mean, this is the representation of our community right here. This is the representation of, of who we all are. Um, to me, like the way I was raised is uh, a lot different than, than most folks. So I recognize and I notice the, um, and honor our indigenous ancestors um, of, of, of the native land. And, um, and this, this here is the representation of that. I know that we all have different subcultures and, and things that we have taken on, but this is what this is what our community is represent like this this is what represents our community right here. Each individual that's on here, all different in all different type of ways, but have a common goal. And that common goal is the upliftment and the empowerment of our indigenous people. So, you know, I just want to commend you all for all the hard work that you do. Keep up the amazing work. 
anything that both sides of the conversation can do to support, we are 100% more than willing to support and have each of your backs. Um, the question that I pose inside the chat um, is a question that I always think about because I actually went to Bryant Elementary and I was raised around so many diverse people of color who come from all different walks of life. And my grandmother being a woman who grew up in Jackson, Mississippi um, and her birth certificate would say mulatto and her siblings says Negro. Um, she taught us about humanity and that was the basis and the foundation of her teaching is humanity and not segregating us uh, and being separate from black, white, Latin and things like that. She said, you judge people based off of how they treat you and what they can bring to humanity. So that's why I put that question in there because I think that us as communities of color have to unite. And I think if we learn to unite more, oh, how much power that we will have, man, like we will have so much power uh, and we would definitely be unstoppable. So, you know, whoever's prepared to answer the question, um, you can just hop on in. I could kick it in. Okay, somewhere. I'm gonna hop on in. Oh, go ahead, Charlie, go ahead. Take it, Sabrina. Take it. <laughs> okay. Well, me personally, and this is my own opinion, how I feel we can uplift the black and brown communities is if they would actually show us, like the society, our, our town would show us that they are willing to help uplift us. And to me, that starts with education. It started in the school. It started with the, the what they were teaching us. And I think right now um, in Bayview or just all around, even in the mission, I think we need more sense of belonging, whether it be murals, whether it be uh, ads on the Muni uh, bus stop, whether it's a, a ad up on a big billboard. You know, we just need more sense of belong, sense of belonging, and for them to at least act as if they are listening to us. And I feel like that would be able to kind of unite us. Um, another way we could probably unite the Black and Brown community is through funds. You know, a lot of people don't want to speak about it, but when we have that big unemployment stimulus, a lot of people were happy. It wasn't a lot of killings and stuff because they had that money. And if the wages would go up, better foods, better education, better transportation, I really believe not just black and brown can come together, the whole community will be able to come together because you'll be at a better mental state to deal with stuff. And, you know, that's just my opinion. I'll pass it on to Charlie. <laughs> so to build off uh, Sabrina, I believe that a collaboration is a, a big, uh, a big way that we can unify because through collaboration, we're able to communicate and we're able to understand the heartbeat of our community. And when we understand the heartbeat, we understand what's going on. So we can address those issues or create programs or uh, uh, that can address those issues, just like the mentoring program that y'all have uh, created right now, just since it's due to COVID, you have to do it virtually, uh, correct? The uh, uh, one thing I can think of is the, the backpack giveaways that um, the Samoan community does, that All NSF does in, in the Mission District and is it, popped up around the different um, neighborhoods in, in the city, which is a great way to do it. One thing, uh, another one is um, to create your own counter narratives, which uh, I believe a lot of people are doing right now uh, with Project Level and the clothing brand, they're creating their own narratives of how they wanna tell their stories. And so uh, we, can do, we can see more of that and, uh, at a, a mass media national level. Um, another one is the one that I was brainstorming with thinking is to create like a brunch for us specifically just for the males and address the issues that are happening with uh, the Latino and black males to unify through, through, through um, breaking bread together. Uh, that's another way. Um, uh, honesty and transparency always helps when there's an issue that have, happens. We need to have oversight of our community so more violence doesn't escalate because you see this, these different neighborhoods beefing and more people getting killed left on all sides. And that's a lose-lose situation for everybody and exacerbates 
uh, the issue for everybody creates a lot of tension and stress for everybody um, in terms of uplifting the community as well. Um, education, but not just formal education. I think the higher, like higher education and K through 12 public schooling needs to be reimagined and revamped because a lot of my folks, uh, the way I grew up, we're a multi sensor we're like high, high touch, we're, we're more, more oral, we're more physical. And so um, it's different types of uh, teaching that needs to happen. And so, um, um, and so that's why I get involved at a variety of uh, different um, community organizations and different events to I'm um, for the cause, not more just say one organization because there's so many of us doing the same work, we need to leverage off each other's resources. I think uh, Kevin Epps said it uh, the best uh, from um, one of his, in, from his documentary straight out of Hunter's Point. Uh, he said that we need to come together like a baseball team. Uh, when when Simone Davis is up, we, we gonna rally behind her, and we gonna we're gonna support her hundred percent, and wait and we, until she hits a home run. When she hits a home run, the next person is up. Pedro is up. Whatever he's doing, we're gonna rally and support and put resources and invest in his uh, cause, and then until he hits a home run. But instead of just one person at bat, we can have multiple people as long as we're on the same page. And that's how uh, that's how we invest and uplift the community and ultimately go into power. Power really goes into property. Once we own our neighborhoods and own our, the real estate uh, in our neighborhoods, we can do a lot more. And so we are yet to get there a bit. Um, uh, let's see where these funds from the city uh, that's allocated to the black community. I forgot how many millions were gonna be allocated uh, to the black community from the mayor's office. And then I believe they said 28 million for the Latino community because 50, half of the people with COVID are Latino uh, right now. This and we're only 15% of the population as opposed to, and the black population is what died down to 3%. That's a disgrace. That's a disgrace. We need to bring our black uh, community back together. And so because Latinos are uh, uh, the majority of California, we're 15 million deep, 39% uh, of California, there's a lot more we can do in solidarity to support our black and brown brothers and every ethnic group uh, for that for that reason. And so those are some ideas. Simone, you want to add to that? Yes, um, absolutely. So mine is coming from a more personable um, experience. So for me, how we can um, unite our communities is basically not being afraid to stand up for what you believe in. Um, a lot of people aren't made to be leaders. A lot of people don't have the courage to go out and speak out. Like for me, I live in Chandler, Arizona, and I be holding my police brutality uh, <laughs> uh, protesting. And it started with, you know, me and just, just two of us. Saturday, it's just us. And what happens is our community started recognizing that. They may not have been able to stand out with us, but they were bringing us water, asking us, okay, what is it that y'all need? Can we get y'all some signs? You know, if you continue to stand up and believe in your mission other people will tag along but there has to be some consistency there can't just be oh i'm going to support this because it's hot on social media right now i'm out protesting whether it's just me and my children or me by myself or i'm out speaking about empowering women if i'm just the only one that showed up to my event so it has to be some consistency and we have to literally stand up for what we believe in because you never know who's watching they just didn't have the courage to come out and lead they needed a spokesperson like me like you and when they see that then they'll be able to pour into your community but they, if there's no consistency where where we're we going to you know we don't know if it's just a meme or something hot on facebook right now so that's my um personal take on how we can unite our um community. Hey Joe. So I just want to add to that um that I think you know from a different angle is don't wait for things to happen. You gotta make things happen, like Simone was saying. Take take the initiative. Don't be afraid to do it. And better yet, think about doing one good deed every day to somebody, to your neighbor. 
not impossible, just at least one, one good deed every day. You know, Sikhism, um, religion uh, from, from, from India have that. You got to do one deed every day. Don't forget to help anybody despite the race, economic uh, status. You just got to help and do good for others because you're doing good for yourself. Talk to your neighbor. Talk to your, uh, help your family. It doesn't matter if they're Chinese, if they're uh, African American, if they're in whatever, do a good deed and that's gonna spread. And that's how you bring community together. That's how you bring your community. Volunteer again on your community and be part of it. And then your network's gonna grow and then you're gonna get people together. And I think that's how we're gonna make change. Cause a little bit, you know, then you know 10 people that you cool with and they're gonna be cool with you. And at this time, at this time, do not expect to get paid. For this kind of job, for this kind of situation, you got to start thinking different of, oh, I'm not going to do nothing for free. They're not going to pay. For this, you need to have a different sense. You need to have a heart for your community. Because if you expect to get paid, it, this is the wrong place to do it. You have to give and then you receive after. But first, you know, just do it. Do a good deed. And that's why I'm saying. Just do a good deed and then in your community and people, and then that's going to save us all. That hard work from the heart. All right. So, um, Rico, you want to go ahead and say we're we getting close to time. It's almost 8.30. I just want to say I agree with all of you guys. I believe um, what Pedro just said is the most important. As a community, we have to um, learn each other cultures. We have to learn each other differences. We have to heal with the trauma. We have to become financially educated with financial literacy, with home ownership, so that we can make changes in policies or we can do things to protect our community. We need more people that look like us to educate us and to get there, like Rico always preaches, is we got to teach our young people the history so that they know where they're going. And um, I think that's the most important thing. But the financial part is, is um, tied to everything because without the financial support or the financial means we uh, uh, disproportionately um, are affected you know with the environments we live the change that we can have the food we eat the medical everything is tied to the finances so I think that's very important as we wrap this up just want to say thank you guys uh, for coming on being our hidden gems this is a very 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 beautiful segment uh, dynamic uh, group of people. This one is going to probably top all. Uh, thanks, Simone. Um, we also just want to say, you know, we are about empowering our community. Um, this Thursday, we want everybody to tune in. We have a sister from Oakland that's going to come on. She's going to be teaching um, the steps into home ownership, the process. Um, we have a lot of people that's been going through our financial literacy series. We have a lot of people who've been getting their finances right, getting their credit right. We have credit repair people come on, and a lot of people are in that process ready to buy a home. So instead of going as a first time home buyer to going blind, we have an amazing sister that's going to come on and teach the steps to the home buying process. And then she's going to follow up with the contract process. After you finally pick the house you want, the steps that you need to take in the contract to understand the contract, because a lot of times that's what we lose at. We don't understand the whole process or we just, you know, listen to people. Uh, she's going to give us some real intentional informative information. So tune in this, this Thursday. Um, at 6 p.m. and uh, she's gonna teach us these steps. And then this Sunday at 2 p.m. we're gonna have our live community conversation. We're talking about mental health and health and wellness in our black and brown community. We have some uh, psychologists, some clinicians, some nurses, some uh, great individuals that have background and experiences in uh, mental health. And we're gonna have that hard conversation with our community. So please tune in for that. And um, with all that being said, thanks for tuning in, share, Start a watch party. Let's get this information out. And then, Rico, you could close out with your thoughts and uh, the final statements. I just want to thank everybody once again. Uh, everybody said some amazing stuff, a powerful panel. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to top this, uh, <laughs> top this one, but, you know, I mean, I think everybody um, does amazing work for what they do. Um, let's build on this collaboration and figure out how we can collaborate with each other to continue the work that we all do. Uh, thanks everybody out there for watching. 
uh, both sides of the conversation because we know through conversation, that's how we create communication and through communication, that's how we heal. So thank you all so much. We love you. Y'all have an amazing night.